Okay, hey guys, so uh, welcome back to the uh, science experiment laboratory here. Today we're doing another food science demo and we're looking at how to make kimchi. Okay, so do you guys happen to know where does, uh, where does kimchi come from? Korea. In Korea, nicely, nicely done there. In Korea, cabbage, 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 right? <laughs> it is made of cabbage, it comes from Korea, and it's, it's a hugely important dish uh, for the Korean nation. So much so that like this was maybe four or five years ago, there was a cabbage shortage in Korea and it was called by the press there a national tragedy, the, the, oh. the lack of cabbage, right? That's and sad. There, there was a time when a Korean astronaut went to the space station, and for that mission, Korean scientists worked for years and for millions of dollars into developing a special kind of kimchi that could be taken to space wow. where cosmic rays from the sun would not mutate the bacteria and make them potentially dangerous. Well, we went to Jamaica yeah. for my sister's wedding, and my mom had to bring kimchi with her. Really? Because we were going to be there for three days. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so for people who really care, it's a big deal. And yeah. uh, let me say right here at the beginning that I uh, have never been to Korea and do not really have any connection to uh, Korea or Korean culture, but I love kimchi. Um, I come to it by way of a guy named uh, Sandra Katz. Um, this is one of his books. Um, it's called The Art of Fermentation. He has a simpler book called Wild Fermentation. And the idea is that you can do fermentation um, in your house, at your home, using wild bacteria and wild yeasts that are living on food that we eat. <laughs> okay? So that's what we're going to try to look at today. The first thing I'm going to do to try to get this going is I'm going to ask Lily, Lily, can you coarsely chop the cabbage here? So our number one ingredient oh. is going to be cabbage. This is most of what kimchi is made of. You can pull out the outer two leaves and coarsely chop the rest. All right. Coarsely chop the daikon I radish. This is a kind of radish. I cabbage because I hate cabbage so Any much. Any which way that you get it, it just it can <laughs> be really coarsely do. chopped. It does not need to be perfect. And as you chop okay. it, as you get the chunks, oops, I want you to just throw them in this bowl, okay? Right. And then we're also going to coarsely chop the carrots. Now, uh, let me also say that there, uh, in my book, there is no one way to make kimchi. This might be heresy to some folks. In Korea, I don't know. But I have heard that in Korea there are um, as many styles of kimchi as there are families in Korea. Chop it. Um, so chop the particular it. style that I make mm. is... So you can chop it in half. And, uh, yeah. Carrots, yeah. radish, and cabbage. Yep, yeah, so just chop it right in half. I Careful can already you're bigger smell than the, the... I can already smell the cabbage. Oh, oh yeah, do you have a hard time with cabbage smell? <laughs> yeah, I do. It's like worse than onions, to be honest. It makes me cry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go easy so there. Bad. Go easy there. Yeah. Uh, My mom used to make me eat cabbage as a kid, and I hated it so much. Right on. Oh. Careful those fingers. So actually, yeah, oh, I know that. So, like while we're waiting, let's maybe, do you want to help her out there, Becca? Oh, yeah, yeah. sure. Cool. Yeah, it's very Mike, I'll show you how it's done. <laughs> so while we're kind of getting this stuff chopped up, um, this is effectively a form yeah, of... Yeah, it's just hard to do. cabbage. This is effectively a form of pickling. Do you guys know what kind of liquid do we normally use for pickling? Vinegar, right? Yeah, vinegar is going to be, so normally, take uh, cucumbers, you can put them in vinegar, you can make yeah. pickles. <laughs> This is a form of pickling, but we're actually just going to use salt. There we go. We're yeah. going to use brine nicely. And then you can kind of just go from, chop. Yeah. from there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All, right. Nice. All right. So as you get those kind of coarsely chopped chunks, you can just throw them in there. Yeah, okay. okay, and then what we're going to do is the first step of making kimchi is to get all of your main vegetables set up. And then what we're going to do is cover them in salt water. Throw that okay. Yeah. And Nate, I'm going to estimate that we're going to need about four cups of water to cover all of this okay. cabbage and carrots. And so to go along with that, we're going to need salt. Becca, could you pass the salt to Nate? Thank you. All right, so Nate, we want to do the, uh, a lot of times recipes will call for one tablespoon per cup of salt. Um, but what we're good. actually going to do is we're going to cut that in half and do two tablespoons per uh, four cups, just because I think that a little bit less salty comes out with the tastier kimchi. Again, is there's no one right way to do this. There's just a general process. So what I'll have you do first, Nate, is actually measure out two tablespoons of salt and pour them tablespoons. into that. All right. I oh, I think there's a break on the table. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nicely done, guys. I should have brought two knives. I could have had you both chopping at the same uh, time. Yeah. <laughs> Putting us to work today. That's right. So two tablespoons in here? Or no, sorry. Let's put them in, in here, here, and we'll actually mix the salt water. Okay. So what we're making here is a brine, and you can do different levels of brine uh, as you're making different kinds of, of uh, fermented vegetables. And actually, let me just say that you could do this with any kind of vegetable. The process that we're doing right here works with practically anything. Oh, that's interesting. My principal loves pickled okra. Mm -hmm. And so I have a, a standing I've promise never to had that. a <laughs> jar of pickled okra. Could and you I'm bring some in for way. us, too? Because yeah, I just absolutely. have never tasted it. I, will, I would love to do that. <laughs> All right. So I'll now, the other thing that's okay. going to be happening here is we're talking about fermentation. Okay? And there's a special kind of fermentation that's going to happen here. And it's actually fermentation that happens in our bodies as well. And the fermentation is called lactic acid fermentation. 
Oh, you guys ever heard of this before? Yes, when we work out. That's yes. why our muscles are sore. <laughs> so good, Becca. And so why is it that we do lactic acid fermentation when we're working out? Anaerobic something. Oh, yes. Respiration. Perfect. Anaerobic <laughs> respiration. Yeah, anaerobic respiration is the opposite of... Aerobic. An aerobic respiration. Very nice. I win. <laughs> Sorry. Very nice. Yeah, Not really on good. the distance rate <laughs> problem, but... Yeah. <laughs> so the deal is going to be that we have anaerobic respiration and aerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration, aero, requires the presence of oxygen, whereas anaerobic respiration um, requires an absence of oxygen. And what we want to do here is we want to encourage anaerobic respiration. And we want to encourage anaerobic respiration because um, almost coincidentally, a lot of the bacteria that live anaerobically tend to be fairly healthy for us humans. Whereas a lot of the dangerous bacteria yeah. tend to be aerobic bacteria. I and did not know that. Also, aerobic respiration is happening in things like molds and yeasts. So if you have molds and yeast growing, they're going to need oxygen to function. And so if you can eliminate the oxygen, you can prevent the growth of molds and yeasts. Does that make some sense? Yes. 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 Did actually, not know that. I'm going to have you guys uh, hold up right there. That's plenty of cabbage. Okay. We'll just stop right there. All we right. can, of course, we chop the radish and the carrots. Okay. I'll just move this right. And actually, even as I'm saying this, I'm realizing, for the, for the sake of timeliness, let's just do the cabbage for this. Okay? Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll move on. So while we're doing this, Becca, will you... Chop the onion just enough so that we can fit it into the food processor. Sure. And do the same with one clove of garlic and the peppers. Sure. You got it. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is pull a little cooking show. It's it's not a great knife. Nice. <laughs> so what, what we would have done here is we would have poured water into um, our salt right here. We would have tried to make a brine that was, again, one tablespoon of salt for one cup of water. And we would want to just completely cover our cabbage and our other vegetables, our coarsely chopped. And we would leave this sitting for about a 24-hour period. Is okay. that hot or cold water? Um, just room temperature water is fine, not, not hot, because we really mm -hmm. don't want to cook it at all, but it nice does not stuff. need to necessarily be uh, cold. OK, so let me move this stuff off here. And here is some stuff that I chopped up for us last night, and I let it sit for oh. 24 hours. So we have oh. same things, daikon radish, oh. carrots, and cabbage open? chopped for us. Or do I stick it in there? So hold, actually, hold off, hold off on oh. that. So I will, I will walk you through that. Would you just get it chopped and ready to get into that? Sure. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay, so at this point, what we've done is we've actually started something that is going to seem really similar to sauerkraut, if anybody knows what sauerkraut is. So sauerkraut is just oh, uh, yeah. grind cabbage that's allowed to sit for a long time. And if we just let this sit um, covered, we would end up with something akin to uh, sauerkraut. Really? Right? Yes. Oh. So kimchi is often called Korean sauerkraut, and I think that's a little bit offensive. It's <laughs> oversimplifying things, but there's a really similar process here. So uh, the major difference here between sauerkraut and kimchi is going to be that after the initial 24-hour soak period of our veggies, we're going to make a paste out of uh, garlic, red pepper, and onion. And actually, there should be ginger also, and I do not know where the ginger went to, but for folks at home, <laughs> you should include ginger in the paste that we're about to make. Ours is going to be gingerless. Gingerless. Which Aww. is actually okay. Again, these variations are totally fine. Traditional kimchi would have ginger. And something that I wouldn't have used anyways uh, is fish sauce. But a very common ingredient in kimchi is, a little, in the paste, is going to be a little bit of fish sauce. I don't use it because it's harder for me to get to an Asian grocery store and find it. But if you have access to one, it can really improve the flavor of your kimchi and make it more complex. All right, so we've got a couple. That's actually enough garlic right there. Okay. I was I'm going to chop off the tops of those two red peppers. Ba-doom. Uh, your knife isn't very sharp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's why we've been struggling. All right. And then what I'll have to do, what we want to do right now. Oh, I see what we did. I see what we did. Okay. Well, we're just going to do this, and I'll take care of that later. So Nate, what I need to do first, I need to drain this water off. Well, Beck is getting this already. So can you, I got a little special draining lid here. Can you hold that guy on and drain the water into this bucket? All right. And Becca, at the same time, you can put the lid on the, the guy. Turn it, pull out that black piece. And then what we'll do is we'll turn it on, and we just kind of want to turn this and just go ahead and turn it on. Chunks that crept up along the sides, or does it look pretty, pretty well chopped? Um, it looks 
pretty well chopped. It should be just a little yeah. beyond dice. We call it a paste a lot of times, but just a little yeah. beyond dice. Looks pretty and that looks pretty perfect <laughs> for our purposes. Okay, so you get your paste and you've got your veggies that are soaked <coughs> for 24 hours. You dump the water uh, salt water uh, off. And so at this point, we just have uh, sort of loose uh, cabbage, carrots, and daikon radish that have been soaking for salt in salt water for 24 hours. So at this point, what I need us to do is I need us to actually mix that in. So if you could pour this in, and I've got that little stir right there, that little uh, spatula, I should say. Yeah, perfect, Becca. And um, if we were at home and we had access to oh. a sink, what I would actually recommend is that we just wash our hands with soap and water and then get our hands into it and mix up the paste with the vegetables just by hand. Since it's we don't have access potent. to that tier, it's it potent. is. And it's making my face water right, right now. I bet. Between the peppers and the onions. Yep. Right. And right. the garlic, too. Oh, the garlic too. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just as best right. you can. And actually, since we have the lid, we could maybe just do, Nate, I told you I wasn't going to work your biceps, but oh, I'm going to do it this time. So it's so okay. Oh, I've been conditioned every last yeah, week. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Stop <laughs> shaking this up. Yeah, just shake it and kind of vigorously lean back and forth. I want to get it all spread around. Right. Oh, yeah, it is strong. It's yeah. Strong. There you go. I am. Really it's watering. Is it <laughs> and really, as this stuff garlic you does this to do this at home, the, the smell is strong and it will it will pervade your it's home. It's good. In a good it's way. Just really strong. Uh, my mom has a separate refrigerator for kimchi. For kimchi, there you go. She does. <laughs> okay. Everything will smell like kimchi. Right? That is awesome. Okay, so let's see what it's looking like now. Yeah, nice to done. Okay, so oh, it's pretty looks, well mixed up. Looks really. It's kind of got good. that that um, kimchi color. Now I should also make one really important point. Traditional kimchi is often made with Napa cabbage. It's a softer, more lettuce-like looking cabbage. I use traditional cabbage just because I think it's a little crunchier and I like the flavor. Again, there's no strict rules here. You can use Napa, you can use regular. It's gonna work out pretty well, much the same. Okay, so at this point we have our uh, vegetables. They've been salted, they've been soaked. Uh, they sat every night, then we mixed in the paste. Okay, and so we're very close to actually being done. And I said we wanna promote anaerobic respiration. Mm -hmm. So lack of oxygen. How could we do that? How could we prevent oxygen from getting at the veggies? Put it jar, in a container. Jar would be great. Airtight. And we yeah. could do airtight, but I actually don't usually do airtight. I kind of just let it, um, I let. I have sort of a loose jar on top. Mostly the, airtight. The main way we're going to do it is we're actually just going to keep everything submerged underwater. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, okay. Well, so you know. So what we're going to do. I got this fancy well. kimchi fermenting jar here. I use a couple of jars like this at home. And you can see it's not really an airtight lid. It just sort of sits loosely on top. Makes sense. Okay. And so what I'll have you do is could, Nate and Becca, could you guys kind of work together to get sure. that in there right. for me? You hold the pot, I will, I'll be a scooper. Oh, I'm a messy scooper. <laughs> <laughs> That's for and kim, and kimchi's a little bit messy, but it's oh. really, yeah, it's yeah. a fun, messy process. It wouldn't be fun if it wasn't messy. That's true, that's true. All right, almost there. And typically when I make batches, I end up making about double what we did right here. So that would be something like two heads of cabbage, All uh, right. a full-size daikon Red. radish, and maybe right. four carrots. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so at this point, um, what we would typically do again, I would have you guys wash your hands and we would actually try to press this down as much as possible. But since we have it, totally sanitize our hands. Uh, Becca, will you push it down with just that little spatula, just as best you can. I think my yeah. eyes are watering quite a bit. Oh, I bet. I'm actually doing okay <laughs> I'm over getting here. used to it now. I'm oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I love to hear that. So you can see there is almost a little bit of water. And if we push down pretty hard, there's a, a, a level of water that's rising here. But it's not enough to totally submerge, submerge. the veggies. Yeah. And that's what we want to do is we want to submerge the veggies. Um, and along with that, what we want to do is make sure that the veggies stay down mm -hmm. when we pour the water in. So we're going to use my fancy rock and plate system. This is very close to what's done uh, in a lot of traditional ways, although it's often a wooden plate or and then a maybe fancier stone. And this is the stone <laughs> I just got out of my yard, but I boiled it for 10 minutes. And it's my, I use it in a lot of different kimchi. It's been used about 20 times. It works great. But if you're going to use a rock from outside to do this, boil it first to clean it. Good call. So this plate is pretty perfect because it fits right inside, and it covers a lot of the cabbage pretty well. This rock's going to be placed on top for weight to keep most of that down. And then, Nate, since you're closest, I'm going to have you do this. Mm -hmm. Can you pour just gently that in there? And we just want to get it to a level where it mostly covers the cabbage. Okay, let's do a little more. Go even a little more. Would it be a what would would it be bad if you filled it too much? No, not necessarily. Go ahead, fill it a little bit more. Does it dilute? Does it dilute the flavor, or do you drain it later? 
You can drain it later, what you just, and you could drain it later. I like to have some kimchi juice. You just ultimately do want it to be mostly veggie and not right. a lot of extra juice. But no, there's no reason why you couldn't fill it up. Okay. Um, so at this point now, I'm not going to say that this prevents all oxygen from getting in. Some oxygen will dissolve in the water right at the surface level. But this is going to prevent a bulk of it from getting in. There's not going to be as much oxygen in this water as there is in the atmosphere, which is really going to prevent the growth of, again, bad bacteria, yeasts, and molds. And that's what we want to do. Huh. We want to encourage the, the production of this one kind of bacteria called lactobacillus. So really, that's a, that's a genus. And there's lots of different species of lactobacillus. There's even a species of lactobacillus named lactobacillus kimchi. And that species of lactobacillus mm. is often found right on raw cabbage leaves. So a lot of those raw vegetables that we put in had living bacteria on it that are going to help this fermentation. <laughs> Another reason we don't totally want an airtight lid, and this comes from that wild fermentation idea, some of the bacteria that we'll get will come in from the outside. And we don't actually mind that gas exchange. It's okay for some of the bacteria to enter in there because the salt and also the lack of oxygen in the water is going to really encourage the growth of healthy bacteria and prevent the growth of uh, unhealthy bacteria. Thanks. And it is a little bit haphazard in, the, in this modern American world where we're so concerned sometimes with germs and keeping clean and sanitation. This can maybe seem a little unsanitary, but this is an ancient process that's been going on for a long time, and it's very safe. And I can speak from uh, personal experience. I love having kimchi around and it's I think it's a ton of fun to make and it's one of these gut foods that's good for your your uh, gut health because you're adding probiotics living bacteria healthy bacteria so how long do you set it let it sit for great okay. question so um, at this point we would let it sit for anywhere from maybe a week to even up to four weeks wow. or longer at room temperature okay if we let this go for a few days what's gonna start to happen is we will get bubbles coming up around the side that would tell you that it's working Okay, now sometimes it can get contaminated. You can get mold growing across the top, and that would be a reason to pitch your batch of kimchi. Um, but for the most part, that should not happen. And as long as it gets going a couple weeks and you've got the, the bubbling happening, um, you know that the fermentation is occurring. And you can even taste test it as you go along. Mm. So every couple days, pull up the rock, pull up the plate, taste it, see how it's going. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that over time, the taste will shift mm -hmm. as the bacteria do their work uh, processing a lot of the different molecules in the food. So yeah, Very cool, cool, right? Yeah. So this is just one last step here, guys. So we would have to wait, right, like three weeks. Oh, and another big thing is going to be how cold or warm is it where you're keeping it. In my house right now, it's about 62 degrees. We keep it pretty cold in the winter. So I would leave it out for three weeks. In the summer, when it gets to be like 75 degrees in my house, I would probably only let it out for a week because the fermentation will happen so much more rapidly mm -hmm. in that warmer temperature. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I just have stuff that's actually sat a week and a half in my house. So it could have gone longer, but it did not. And that's okay. And I'm just going to do this guy right here. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Pay no attention to the green bowl. So I do want you guys to just be able to try a little bit of kimchi. Okay. I have my big kimchi chopsticks, and then I have a fork. What I'm going to have you do is, if you're up for trying a little bit, would be I'm just going to put some in the bowl, just fork a little piece and pull it off the fork for yourself, and then pass it along. Does that sound okay? Sure. Look at these sweet big chopsticks I have. Aren't they cool? Those are pretty yeah, cool. Those are huge. huge. <laughs> We got them in a dollar store in Taiwan. <laughs> oh, it smells, it smells really smell. good. Yeah, and so you guys will be able to tell. I mean, think about what cabbage tastes like. And this dish should taste much more pickled. Okay, and you can see there's a little bit of radish in there. There's a little bit of carrot. And, and give me your honest opinion. You do not have to love it. Uh, but I've, I've been surprised by how many people really enjoy this stuff. It's good. How does that compare to your mom's kimchi? It's pretty good. It's a lot less spicy than I'm used to. Yeah, and actually, yeah. I, ma I specifically made a non-spicy batch. Oh, I think. Thinking that maybe we wouldn't So you can do, I think in this one, I did four peppers and okay. two cabbages. I think typically I would do more like eight. Yeah, I'm used to like a redder kimchi. Yeah, yes. yeah, absolutely. I think that's more. And, and actually, so this is purple right now, and the purple did you is like from, it? It's actually pretty good. We made this with red cabbage at home, and then we just did green cabbage here on the show. Mm -hmm. okay. So the green cabbage will just say, it'll just say sort of clear and green. But if you use red cabbage, it, it stains your cabbage this kind of beautiful purple color, which I really love. So Very what do you cool. guys think? What flavor? What are you, what are you, what are you getting? Yeah, it's pretty good. Nice. Yeah. You get a little garlic. Can you taste the garlic? I can taste yeah. the garlic. Yeah. And it's the ginger, great. The ginger is really strong in this batch, I feel like. I like cabbage was actually really good. So, and I usually don't like cabbage, so it was actually good though. Right. Well, I, I mean, could taste it, but it didn't taste like horrible. Like my mom used to make it. Sorry, mom, but. Um, <laughs> 
It's just so much different. Fermented food is just mm -hmm. so much different. It's like if you went off and ate a coffee bean off the tree, mm -hmm. it would not taste like coffee. After the fermentation right, process, I think we are not we get cut you off. I think okay. we're running out of time here. Oh, I'm so sorry. So yeah. I'm just so excited about yeah, kimchi. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Understandably. Uh, tune in next week for more Kitchen Science. Subscribe! Come on, push the button. You know yeah, you want, want to. to. <laughs> Do it.